What is up, MFers, and welcome back to another exciting episode today. In about a week ago, I made that bait painting tutorial. I went over everything you could possibly need to go out and start custom painting crankbaits, hardbaits, softbaits even. And then I went ahead and showed you a very, very simple shad scheme, and we ended up giving that bait away. Giveaway winner is posted on that video below. Now today, we're gonna go ahead and do a super simple cross scheme. Now, despite it being simple, it is actually an incredibly sick all around cross scheme that I've caught a ton of fish on in the past. And just like last video, we are going to give away the final finished painted baits that you saw in the thumbnail for this video. So stick around at the end of the video. I will tell you guys how you can win those baits. Of course, go drop a thumbs up and subscribe to Melican Fishing right now if you like these lure painting tutorials. Got a ton of great feedback from you guys, which I was super stoked about because I love to do these. And today we're going to be using a top coat option that's super, super cheap, fast, and easy to do. Much easier than what I talked about in the last video. So without further ado, Let's go. All right, guys, we are ready to shake and bake. Here are the colors we're going to be using today. We got opaque white, Createx, uh, Createx Wicked. This is burnt umber, detail burnt umber, that is. Uh, this is wicked orange, again, a wicked color by Createx. Detail moss green, also wicked color. Uh, this is opaque black and then iridescent blue. Now, I really, really like these wicked colors because they're a lot thinner. They spray on much, much better than the typical opaque uh, or transparent colors for that matter. These are the two baits we're gonna be painting today. This is a blank wiggle wart bait. It was actually molded from the pre Rapala wiggle wart mold. Use it a ton. It is a absolute fish catcher. And this, of course, is a six cents flat 75. I wanted to give you guys an opportunity to see a bait uh, that is already painted and see how I paint that and how we can just paint right over the top of that to improve the paint scheme uh, or just change out the paint scheme. I have like five of these in this color, so we're gonna paint it up in a super custom badass looking color. As you can see, I removed the hooks, split rings, eyeballs. That is all you're gonna need to do for this guy and add a little bit of tape to the bill, we'll be ready to go. Also, we're gonna be using this stencil right here today. As you can see, it's kind of like a backwards L shape. Nothing too exciting there. It's imperfect and you'll see why that looks so badass. And I'll talk about it a little bit more as we do the detail. All right, first color we're starting with is the opaque white. And of course, using a little bit of high performance reducer uh, to mix that guy up, get the consistency just right like I talked about in the last video. And so I got this mixed up. I think it looks pretty close to good. Now, I've never seen a crawfish that's perfectly white at any point in their body. They do have really light spots a lot of times, um, but we're gonna darken that up, make it a little bit off-white, a little bit more brown colored, and we're gonna put some of that detail uh, burnt umber, I think it's called in there, that we, uh, we're gonna use a little bit later on as well. All right, so that right there is the color I am looking for. I don't know if you guys can see that too well, but basically it's just an off-white with a little tiny bit of brown in there. This is an awesome, awesome base uh, for any type of crop pattern you're gonna paint. Now, since we're doing a base coat, I got the PSI turned up quite a ways. It's at about 30 right now. And then we're gonna touch it back down as we do some detail stuff. All right, there you have it. It's almost like a, a peach color there, and that's exactly what we're looking for. Now we'll repeat the process with the flat 75. So something to remember with previously painted paints like this guy right here, it is gonna take several more coats to hide that original color with your base coat. I think it took four coats on this guy, but now we are good to move on to step number two. Well, like I told you guys, it is important to clean your brush about 10 times as much as you would want to because any type of color that's in there previously is going to pollute the next color you're painting, which leads me to my next color, which will be the Createx Wicked orange. Now this one, like I said, these wicked paints shoot a lot better, so I don't need to thin the wicked paints uh, hardly at all. I'm going to crank the PSI down to about 20 PSI, which is going to shoot it out um, a little bit better for details. It's a lot thinner paint than the, the original opaque colors from Createx, so it's going to pass through the gun much, much better. Now we're only going to need a few drops of this. A little bit goes a long way on really bright, uh, really dark colors as well, but really bright ones. So we only got about three or four drops in there. That might not be quite enough, but let's get it going. All right, next color up is another wicked color. So we're not gonna need to thin this one um, hardly at all. If any, this is detail moss green. I love detail moss green. For any type of green crop patterns, this one is absolutely money. So the detail moss green, we are going to shoot on the top of the bait and then fade it about halfway down the bait. 
And this again will go on really, really dark if used too much. So I like to be nice and fade that very easily. All right, that's about all we're gonna need, as you can see, nice and dark on the top, and then it just kind of fades into that peachish color on the side. We're gonna want a lot of green because obviously, you no know, crawdads have a lot of green on them, a lot more green than white on the lighter side of their sides. Uh, but yeah, that's gonna be about perfect right there. That's a nice fade. All right, next up is the Wicked Createx Detail Burnt Umber is the color. This was the one we added to the white to make it a little bit off color. And now we're just gonna kind of use it up on the top of the bait and the shoulders of the bait just to give it a little bit of offsetting color. Now with this one, you don't need to shoot much on here. I shoot just a little bit up on the top of the bait. We'll kind of fade it into that brown. Um, and then you'll, you'll just kind of see how this looks. It, looks. it has a really nice, cool effect. So I like to take it and kind of make little stripes, uh, just like you can see on the side of the bait right there, the, the little wet spot. And you'll see in just a second how that looks, but uh, that's about all we're gonna do. We don't need much brown on there uh, to make this guy really, really stand out. I kind of take it down, do some, some kind of some spots on the top of the bait, and then we'll just kind of fade it up into the shoulder of that bait right there on both sides. And that is all we're gonna need for the brown. All right, we are almost done. Next one up is the opaque black. Like I told you guys previously, even though it is an opaque color, it does shoot very, very well um, just from years of experience using this color. So I shake it up really well. I won't thin this guy out. I'll add really, we're only gonna need probably four or five drops. This is just gonna be detail work. All right, so this is where the stencil is going to come into play. As you can see, this is just a really imperfect like backwards L shape. Uh, but it works really, really well as a cross stencil. And I'll show you guys how. Now, theoretically, you'd put it on the back like that and put the big portion of the uh, the cross shell, that big, uh, where the heart is, the crawdad on the back, since they are they do move backwards, and this is the end where the claws would be. Um, but for cosmetic purposes, and a lot of guys use it like this, we'll put it up on the front just like so. Like I said, this catches a ton of fish, and so I'm not gonna argue with the fish. So this first stencil area, we're gonna take this almost all the way, uh, probably at least three quarters of the way down the bait. And we're just gonna hold it there with our hand and just kind of free draw right along the edge of this stencil. All right, so that is the first part of the stencil. Now, one thing you gotta make sure you do is let that dry before you move on to another part. Like I said, since we didn't add any thinner to the black, it's gonna dry much quicker. But all we're gonna do here, we're gonna add this stencil um, about half as far back as a full length would be. So we're gonna go about halfway right there. And I'm gonna do like one, two, probably three more um, of these little shell markers. There you have it, that is a uh, sexy, sexy cross stencil, if I ever saw one. And let's go ahead and repeat on the other side and we'll repeat it on the wiggle wart bait. Now, since the wiggle wart blank doesn't come with eye sockets, we're also gonna shoot a little bit of black right there on the eyeball. It doesn't need to be anything exact or perfect. There you have it. Now you don't have to do this. I, I, a lot of people like to do it, just add a little bit more of a craw pattern, craw texture to the bottom, but we're just gonna make some, uh, some lines that kind of connect on the bottom. Kind of give it a nice little extra flare like that. There you go, so now we have uh, lines on the bottom as well. But yeah, looking pretty sharp. There's one more step we're gonna do. All right, the very last paint we're gonna do just to add a little bit more to this color scheme, scheme is this uh, iridescent blue. Now iridescence has a giant uh, number of little metal flakes mixed in. You can hardly see that in there, but this is gonna give it a nice blue sheen. Um, so you're gonna need to mix this guy for sure with a little bit um, of that high performance reducer, but we're not gonna need hardly anything. So maybe only a couple drops of this and a couple drops of high performance reducer and we'll be ready to go. All right, now like I told you guys in the previous video, this blue sheen we're gonna give this thing um, shows up a lot better on darker colors. So we're gonna wanna be careful not to put too much on this or we'll completely alter the color of the bait. Um, but all we're gonna do, we're gonna give like one quick coat of the entire back and side just really, really lightly. Just kind of like that. 
boom. And then we're gonna give it a little bit heavier of coat uh, on the tail and on the eyeballs and head. I really like to put a lot of blue up there. I think it's a really good replicator of uh, where the crawdads have like those blue accents is on the tail. Uh, on the tip of their, their claws and up by the uh, their head and by the that last tail portion. So there you have it. Hard to tell from there, but um, this guy has an awesome, the whole thing has like a blue sheen to it now, which is uh, pretty damn slick and it's really gonna pop once we get that top coat on there. All right, we added these jet black eyes to these six cents bait. I think those all black eyes look super, super sick on these baits. Time to do a little bit of top coating. Now we're gonna do something different today. We're gonna use Plasti Dip as a top coat. And a lot of people might not talk about this or know about this, but you can actually use Plasti Dip as a top coat. Um, I like to use it for craw baits because it actually gives it more of a matte finish. So we're gonna have a nice matte finish over the top of these. Now, Plasti Dip, uh, you do need it to be in a ventilated area. So I'm gonna run outside, spray these up real quick. I don't think there's anything too exciting about those. I might end up doing two coats on them. But the good thing about this is in about a half hour, these will be good to go. And then within about a day to two days, uh, they will be ready to fish because this Plastisol hardens really, really nicely on those and it makes for an awesome top coat I've been using uh, just here lately. So let's give this a whirl. Well, there you go guys. That is the finished product. After only about 15 or 20 minutes on the drying rack, they are dry to the touch. Once again, that's the clear Plasti Dip top coat. And these guys will be rock solid, ready to fish here in about a day once that hardens up completely. Better go comment down below if you think that is a sick, badass cross scheme that you would like. All right, guys, that is it. That is the end of the cross scheme tutorial. That bait turned out pretty freaking sweet, didn't it? I hope you guys really, really liked that. Comment below if you like that. But uh, like I said, we're gonna be giving those two baits away this time. We're gonna give away two baits so you can win that awesome flat 75 and that pre repal wiggle wart knockoff blank that I just painted up I will ship them out to you guys like I'm going to do in the majority of these lure painting videos. Same exact rules as last time. All you got to do to be entered to win those two baits, drop a comment down below, go hit the thumbs up right now, and subscribe to Millican Fishing. One week from now, I'm going to use a random comment generator. Go down, pick your comment, make sure you're subscribed to Millican Fishing, and then I'll get in touch with you and get that shipped out to you. I love being able to do these bait painting videos. Tell me if you guys like these videos, what colors you want to see. That'd be awesome if you'd comment that down below. And we're going to go ahead and keep moving on with those baits. But check back tomorrow for another awesome video, something really sick I did down in Missouri. And I will catch you guys very, very soon. Thank you so much for watching. I am out of here. Peace. I'm not sorry. I can't help this love like mine. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't stop with a love like mine